A lot of time when people think about satellites and satellite internet, they think about the space portion. What they don't realize is there's an entire ground ecosystem built to support that. We originally thought we're going to use other companies, we're going to contract it out. But if we wanted to be able to give back to our customers that lowest possible price, that we were going to have to do this ourselves. The job of the Earth Station Siemens Astronus is to design, build, and operate all of our antennas and ground networks all over the world. We had this crazy realization, which is that if we're not careful, the cost of the things on the ground could become more expensive than the cost of the satellite itself. We had no intention when we originally set out to own the ground segment. Earth Station's programs tend to be a very large piece of satellite telecommunications. Most companies, especially our larger traditional companies, and GEO and LEO both, employ massive numbers of people. We have a really small team that's focused on completing this with a minimum amount of people in order to cut costs and pass that savings on to our customers. Traditional GEO satellites can take up to five, seven years, sometimes a decade, in order to build their satellite. The ground usually takes maybe a year, so traditional GEO operators have a long time to figure out the ground segment. Astronus has gotten to the point where we build satellites so quickly, we've got to figure out how to move fast and how to keep up with our space design so that we can get the ground system implemented faster than anywhere it gets done currently. Ultimately, at the end of the day, we're a mission-driven company and we achieve our mission more effectively the lower we can bring down the cost of internet delivery. Just like how we innovated on the satellite, how can we innovate on the ground to make sure that that cost is affordable for our users? You have a satellite in the sky and you have a person sitting at their home computer and they need to get internet between the satellite and their home computer. So how does that happen? For a LEO constellation like Starlink, single users have to buy their own personal antennas for access on Starlink's shared network. In Astronus's case, we provide dedicated connectivity from a single satellite, and instead of selling direct to consumer, we normally sell to cellular providers, businesses, and governments. A single antenna can be used to provide cellular backhaul, connect to business, or provide internet for an entire community. Geostationary antennas stay fixed at a permanent object in the sky where low Earth orbit satellites constantly moving around the Earth, so they need antennas that are capable of tracking them as they move around. You need a way to connect directly to the user. You need a way to deliver connectivity between the user and the satellite. You need an antenna that is talking to the satellite to give it instructions about when to fire the thrusters or to collect telemetry information to understand the overall health of the satellite. We also have a specialized antenna whose job it is to ping the satellite every once in a while and make sure that the connectivity is good. We have a wide variety of different antennas, all set for different purposes, different sizes. Most of them are gonna be kind of like what you see right behind me. Not only is the antenna package just the reflector, there's many more components to this the high power amplifier, block up converter, low noise block down converter, all of the intra-facility link cables that connect the antenna itself back to the rack hardware that's housed inside of the facility. Our customers require varying levels of connectivity. In order for us to get more throughput, we can increase the antenna size, we can increase the amplifier size, we can do both. There are certain cost curve. An antenna above two and a half meters starts skyrocketing in cost. So maybe then we look at the amp. Amps also start skyrocketing in cost around five to 10 watt. It's always a delicate balance of trying to find the right antenna size with the right amp for that specific condition. First thing we think about is what is its purpose? What's it gonna do? We make a lot of those decisions based on that. We like to keep the antenna sizes compact, just what they need to be in order to perform the mission at hand. We don't wanna grossly oversize an antenna. We don't wanna undersize an antenna. There are a bunch of ways to mount these dishes. You can put them on the ground, you can put them on the roof, you can put them on a cell tower. And even within that, there's different size and shape roofs. Do you put it on a pad? Do you have to have it elevated because there's flooding? Is there high wind speed? Is there snow? Is there rain? And in some cases, antennas are even mounted on things like ships, airplanes, buses. Most of what we deal with are ground-based installations. You're, you're talking about thousands of terminals, thousands of antennas per mission that we have to install, plan, design, and keep operational through some pretty hazardous conditions. And it's the Earth Station's team job to figure out where we're gonna put these antennas, build them, and actually get them functional and put them into action. 
there's really nothing in the world that doesn't somehow affect the way that we operate and the way that we deploy antennas, the way we even think and plan about setting up these networks. Antennas can be very sensitive to rain fade or what we call atmospheric attenuation. There's airborne dust, pollutants, things that exist inside the atmosphere that are actually inhibitive to satellite telecommunications. So sometimes we actually have to compensate for this atmospheric attenuation. For a project in the Philippines, we came up with a very creative solution to get around this rain fade issue. The average size of the storm is between 30 and 50 kilometers. We can account for that by placing another antenna at a site 30 to 50 kilometers away and actually be able to maintain connectivity with our satellite from various ground stations by switching back and forth between them. This is a problem that our Earth Stations team has managed to resolve in, in a very basic way for a very complicated problem that in other places would require a lot of engineering support. How do we solve this with the most minimal amount of time and the minimal amount of money possible? And that's the sort of thing that you can never expect out of a large aerospace company. The lack of resources that cause us to get creative that has allowed this team to really flourish. The Earth Stations team spends a lot of time working with our network planning team. They're the people that tell us what the customer wants and we make it happen. Instead of going to teleports that charge thousands of dollars a month for their service, we've started going around to local storage facilities, to local businesses and asked, hey, can we just put a satellite antenna on your roof? And many of them have been very open to this for a matter of a couple hundred bucks a month, if not less. We actually spend a lot of time thinking about where these antennas are gonna go in the world, depending on where our satellite's gonna be, the country that it's gonna be in. Often that just means sitting in front of a Google map, looking at our satellite beam patterns, picking out towns. And then six months later, we're there and we're in the thick of it, we're knocking on doors. Now, everything becomes reality. One of the great parts about this job is that myself and the rest of the Air Stations team spends a lot of time traveling. We get to see a ton of the world. We'd get to go out and interact, spend some time in those communities, learn a little bit about where we are and who we're providing these services to. They had to go out in Alaska to install the carrier monitoring sites right as Alaska was going from fall to winter. And winter in Alaska is no joke. I think the ideal ground team member is someone who super scrappy. They're going to have to fly somewhere that's often fairly remote, and they're going to have to build something. They might not have all the tools that they need, so they're going to have to get really creative. We're going to be putting antennas all over the world, so depending on where you are in the world, customs are different, the rules are different. Somebody who can kind of become a chameleon and go anywhere and fit right in. That's really fulfilling to go out and actually build some of this stuff on our own. Get to say that we did it as a company. It's part of our mission. It's how we work. It's why I joined this startup in the first place. It's a ton of fun and incredibly fulfilling. Every problem we solve, every dollar we save, and every time we're able to do things just a little bit faster is all value that we can then send back to our customer so that they can supply their users with cheaper and better internet. And that's the goal of Astronauts, is to connect more people.